running cost of vehicles today is a common grouse of most Indian customers and government policies and rising fuel prices are not making things easier. Plus, the fuel efficiency in our busy traffic conditions means that customers have begun to feel the brunt of refilling fuel tanks of their vehicles. And the government's non-favorable policy towards the life cycle of diesel engine vehicles also deters most customers from buying them. Not to mention that diesel vehicles are getting more and more expensive with increasingly difficult emission norms effectively killing small diesel engines in the Indian market. In such a scenario, does a hybrid power plant make any sense? Well, Toyota and by association Maruti Suzuki seem to think so. Maruti Suzuki has been selling mild hybrid cars in India for a while, but this is the first time that either of the two manufacturers is launching a strong hybrid with an EV Mod 2 for the masses. The Prius not being a mass market effort, both manufacturers claim that not only will the hybrid system significantly improve fuel efficiency, thereby reducing running cost but also reduce air pollution in heavy traffic. The SUV simply switches to the EV mode and shuts the engine down. The Urban Cruiser High Rider, to call it by its full name, is based on Maruti Suzuki's global platform, which also underpins the Brezza. However, Avatar, the High Rider features a long overall length at just over 4,365 mm and a large wheelbase at 2,600 mm. Both the Toyota Highrider and Maruti Suzuki's Grand Vitara are essentially the same product with a few visual changes. The Highrider comes with most design changes from the Grand Vitara. It comes with 17-inch rims and sharp front and rear design. The Highrider has a good road presence. The restrained use of chrome all across the car also adds to its overall appearance. The front end with its twin layered headlight design and the rear with its sweeping tail lights further give the high rider an excellent aesthetic appeal. Inside the car, you can obviously feel the Maruti origins. Given that the steering wheel, center console and many other control surfaces are from Maruti Suzuki stable. The dual tone interior of the car looked quite pleasing though. Overall, the interior is quite a nice place to be especially with the sharp looking 9 inch multimedia touchscreen and digital instrument cluster. The driver also gets HUD which is quite useful in the strong hybrid variant of the high rider. It not only shows speed and other data but also charging status and driving modes employed by the engine management. Coming to the mechanical side of things, the high rider will be offered with two engine options, a mild hybrid and a strong hybrid both paired with a petrol engines. The mild hybrid option powered by a 4-cylinder 1.5-litre engine will be available with both a 6-speed automatic and a 5-speed manual. The top spec variant will have all-wheel drive with selectable driving modes. The strong hybrid variant with the 1.5-litre 3-cylinder engine paired to an eCVT and a large battery pack in this stream, the high rider has a power output of 114 HP along with a substantial torque output. Once you start driving the high rider, you immediately notice that at slow and cruising speeds, the strong hybrid system of the high rider often goes into EV only mode, shutting off the engine altogether and thereby contributing to the overall efficiency of the power plant. On the other hand, the ride comfort of the high rider is fantastic and its suspension is tuned to deal with both good and bad roads effectively. This means that the SUV maintains excellent stability at three digit speeds, smooth stretches, but at the same time doesn't face any issue over bad roads either. Now, the high rider does have a few shortcomings. First, the headroom of the rear seat is compromised. People above 6 feet in height will find it a rather constricted place to be. Second, the high rider also doesn't have a flat floor in the rear, meaning that a passenger sitting in the middle of the rear seat will have a tough time. Third, with its large battery, the strong hybrid variants of the high rider have a rather limited boot capacity. 
This means that on long road trips, you will have to compromise on the amount of luggage you carry. On the other hand, the high rider really has very low running cost despite being petrol powered and could very well be a great choice for a lot of Indian customers dealing with the inflated fuel prices right now. Its efficiency levels at least of the strong hybrid variants are high enough to make it a very attractive proposition for many customers in India. In the ongoing debate about hybrid versus electric suitability for the Indian market, we should go with hybrids for obvious reasons. There is no need for particularly large batteries or charging infrastructure and the high rider proves that a strong hybrid can offer efficiency levels that regular engines can't match. Plus, with an EV-only drive mode, you can do short distances on electric power alone. However, the final word on hybrids and their suitability will also depend on the price premium that a strong hybrid powertrain demands over a regular petrol engine car. If the difference in price is not too high, the lower running cost of hybrids could make them very attractive to Indian customers and Toyota could be the first manufacturer to benefit from it.